Number 30. Write the molecular and empirical formulas of the following compounds. Then I have A through D, so I'm just going to write that out. A, B, C, and D. Okie dokie. Um, we did one just like this, so if you need a full refresher on the difference between molecular and empirical formulas, go back to number 29. If you're on the playlist, just, you know, click the back button, and there you go. So this one will be a, you know, quickened version. Um, let's just say that molecular formulas are going to be the formulas that are given, all right? So it's always the formula that is given to you. You don't touch it. You just state exactly what is there, all right? Empirical formula, on the other hand, is the simplified, simplified formula. It is the most simple simplified formula. So if you can simplify your molecular formula, the one that is given, voila, then you turned your molecular formula into an empirical formula. But there will be some times when your molecular formula will equal your empirical formula. Your molecular formula, which I'll represent MF, will equal your empirical formula if you have a 1 for a subscript. So just remember those subscripts, guys, right? A subscript is something on the bottom. So for example, if I had, you know, O2, this 2 is a subscript, all right? The numbers on the bottom is the subscript. So I'm just going to say subscript, blah. So if you see that you have a 1 anywhere in your molecular formula, automatically it's also the empirical formula. You can never simplify a 1 down to another number that is a whole number. That's what empirical formulas are. They're, they still have to be whole numbers. They can't be like uh, fractions or decimals. All right, so let's get started. So for A, I see that I have an H, a C, an H, double bound to a C, an H up top here, a C, a C, and then filled with all H's. And then I will highlight the different ones with my highlighter pen. So first let's start with carbon. How many carbons do we see? One, two, three, four. So my molecular formula, I'll put it down here. My molecular formula would start off with C4. Now, does it matter whether you put carbon first or hydrogen first? Absolutely not. But, you know, generally, you, you always like to put your um, middle elements first in your nomenclature, and then you kind of branch out. The only exception is acids. But for this, in, you know, case and purposes, it, it really doesn't matter which one you say first. Now, how many hydrogens are here? Where there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this turns out to be C4H8. Box that answer off. That's the one that you see. You don't touch it. That's your molecular formula. But now your empirical formula is going to be the one that you can simplify, if you can. So you look at C4H8, and you say, can I simplify this 4 and this 8. And when we simplify, we always mean in terms of division. So can these two numbers be divisible by something to get a, you know, simplified whole number? And yes, the number is 4, right? 4 divided by 4 and 8 divided by 4 will get me a whole number. So 4 divided by 4, it would turn out to be C1, right? But technically, when we don't have a number there, it's implied that it's 1, so you don't have to write the 1 there. But then this turns into H2. Oh, sorry. I don't know why I put a 4 there. H2. So that's your empirical formula. So that's your molecular formula and your empirical formula for the first one. Check that one off. So now it should get a little bit easier. So let's write out B. I'm going to put B up here. H, C, C, triple bond C. There's an H and an H. Um, C, H. Okay, so what do we got? How many carbons? One, two, three, four, so four again. So my molecular formula would start off with C4, and then how many H's? One, two, three, four, five, six. 
So this would be C4H6, that's your molecular formula, box that off. Now, can we simplify this molecular formula into a empirical formula? So C4H6. So I look at the 4 and I look at the 6. Is there any number that's divisible by both of them? Yeah, right? 2. I could divide this by 2 and I could divide this by 2. So my empirical formula would be C2H, what's 6 divided by 2? It's 3. So there you go. That's your empirical formula for this one. So box that off. Those are your two answers for B. Let us see. We got SI, SI, and then chlorines all around. CL, oh, sorry, no, this is an H. We got CL up top here, chlorine up top here, chlorine over here, and then H down here. So let's do the molecular formula first. We'll start in the middle, then we'll branch out. So I have one silicon here, another silicon here. So when I start my molecular formula, I have Si2. Now let's do chlorines. I have a chlorine here. I have a chlorine here. That's two, three chlorines, four chlorines. So that is Cl4. And then let's do the hydrogens. I have H and H. So we'll put this at the end, H2. You could also put it in the beginning. It, it doesn't matter. So that would be your molecular formula. Box that answer off. Now let's see if we can simplify it. You guys probably know the answer, right? So I have Si2, Cl4, H2. Is there any number that you can simplify the 2, the 4, and the 2? Yes, there is, and it is number 2. So I can divide each one of these by 2. And your empirical formula would be Si, just one of them, so you don't have to write the number, Cl2, and H. Box that answer off. That is the empirical formula for the third one. And now, last but not least, we got a P, an O, O, H, O, H, O, H. Okay. So, how many phosphorus? We have one in the middle. So I'm just going to say MF, molecular formula, one phosphorus. Next comes oxygen, one two, three, four oxygen, so that's O4. And now how many hydrogens? One, two, three. Now in this case, I'm going to put the hydrogens in the front just to show you that you could put it in the back or you could put it in the front. So I'm just going to say that this is, just so that I have more room, H3PO4. Now, what do you think in terms of empirical formula? Box this answer off. That's your molecular formula. What do you think about empirical formula? Well, I have one phosphorus here. And we said before that your molecular formula will equal your empirical formula if you have a 1 for a subscript. Doesn't matter where. So I should have put an example over here. But a good example would be like H2SO4. There was only one sulfur here. So that's the molecular formula equals the empirical formula. But this one, there's one here, there's one phosphorus. So, oh gosh, I tried to erase it, but there you go. So that means that the molecular formula equals the empirical formula. So it would be exactly the same. Box that answer off. Those are your two answers for D and you're done. So hopefully this was quick and easy. Um, yeah, I mean, Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope I'm helping you out. Let me know in the comments, you know, how this has been going for you. I'd love to hear from you guys. I will respond to all of you guys. Um, in any news, I'll see you for number 31. Have an awesome day. Keep studying. Take care.